it's tough when you wake up and there's uh you don't know anyone and you don't know the town and you're like i have a lot of time to kill before this fucking show yeah. tonight and you're like i'm in a i'm already in a bad state like what's this gonna be like in eight more hours yeah i mean that's why it's like rogan and ari that's why they started bringing yeah people on the road with them always it's like why wouldn't you if you can afford it i bring would your always friends. do it yeah i mean people always, I, try, I don't go on the road as much because i'm not at that level where i could bring people yeah i'm yeah. like why don't you go on the road i go if i'm in like dating for five days by myself I'll, I'll, <laughs> and it's cold or something I'm like <laughs> that's what these guys degrees, i'm like fuck mm-hmm. this man. i remember bird always used to be like he's like by saturday i'm suicidal oh. Everybody, uh, welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast. I'm the host, Ari Shafir. And before we get to a podcast with uh, um, Ryan O'Neill and, and Brent Tobler from Denver, Colorado, but before that happens, um, obviously I know a lot of you are feeling uh, uneasy and anxious, fearful even of what's going on in the Ukraine with Russia right now. And in these uncertain times, I found that most people go to the source they can trust for these things, which is the stand-up comedians. They turn to us to help understand the truth and help guide people through these tough times. And so, as a stand-up comedian, I'd like to explain to you what's going on there in the Ukraine. It's not what you think. It's not what's been fed to you. They tell you that Voldemar Putin uh, is trying to take over the world. He's threatening nuclear uh, 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 retaliation for any interference. Putting um, the United States, China in a head-to-head-to-head conflict to see who will be the superpower and maybe will end all life on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not true. That's the mainstream media. The story of the Russian invasion of the Ukraine dates back a long time ago to February. February of 2022 in Beijing, China. Specifically, the Olympics, specifically, even more specifically, to the men's aerial freestyle event, in which a Chinese citizen named, let me find this here, Guy Gongpu, um, easily beat out the next two contenders. Now, those next two contenders are where this whole story begins. It's a rivalry that dates back a few years, maybe let's call it nine years for argument's sake. Between one Ilya Burov from the Russian uh, Federation of States and, and so so forth such, and Alexander Abramenko from, you guessed it, the University of Crane. Now, they went head-to-head in that men's aerial freestyle skiing event, in case you're wondering, and Abramenko barely beat out uh, 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 Burov, barely beating him out, embarrassing him in front of a mostly communist, capitalist communist, nonetheless communist, state of China. Now, Voldemort Putin was watching that day and couldn't quite take it. Couldn't quite take this young Ukrainian upstart laughing in the face of everything the Russians believe, which is that they are the second best country to China. Not the Ukraine. And the Ukraine got in the way of that. Voldemort was seething while he watched the podium. Seething at seeing his guy at the shortest podium. Voldemort himself was only five foot seven. This brought up many issues from childhood and so forth. After that, it was a no-brainer. Attack Ukraine from all fronts, start at Kiev, which is a city, and move forward until you find this man, this Alexander. No, no E at the big at the R, it's just Alexander. Um, Abramenko, find him and have a rematch for the men's aerial freestyle silver medal. Burov was part of the uh, invasion. He led the 13th Battalion. Uh, they did quite well, advanced, murdered many parents, uh, so forth, so on. Um, I 
think they burned a, a village uh, to the ground. And uh, the point is, he got deep inside all the way to the mountains in Ukraine where he was waiting to have this rematch. Now, what was not expected was the cowardice, the cowardice of our Bermenko hiding, hiding, afraid to put his silver medal on the line in exchange for a possible bronze. Do you remember Saturday Night Fever? Do you remember that? Do you remember what, uh, what's his name did? The dude from uh, Pulp Fiction? The gay one? Remember? He won that fucking uh, dance contest and he said, nah, it's not fair. Those spicks, not my words. Travolta's, that's his name. Those spicks were better than us. And it was only racism that kept them from getting first place medal. And so what he did was he went over there with his first place money and he put it right in the Latino people's heads. What I'm describing is Latino people's. He said that word. He put it right in their hands. And he said, you deserve to win. Now, as a Jew, I, the whole time I was thinking, well, at least take back the second place money. You just gave them your first place money. You, you exchange with them. Don't just give them both. It's one of the inconsistencies of that movie. Also, there's many rapes. Watch it again. You'll remember. And Abramenko would not defend and re, uh, uh, put on the line his, his silver medal for the men's aerial freestyle. And so... Putin said, I'm not pulling out. And America's like, you got to leave him alone. They go, no, it's not happening. I appoint every nuclear arsenal I have at you, United States, at you too, China, at, even at you, Ireland. And those are the only three. Until Abramenko comes out of hiding and defends his fucking title. And that's all that's going on. This is not something that can concern you. This won't result in nuclear weapons re being used. Don't worry about it. Go back to your regular lives, worrying about what your friend's doing on vacation, uh, if a comedian's tweeting the wrong thing. Go back to your normal stuff. This doesn't concern you. You don't even watch men's aerial freestyle. It went fucking uh, uh, Chinese, Ukrainian, Russian. It's not our event. Don't even worry about it. Get back to your normal day. Get back to listening to great stuff, like Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank podcast, hosted by a comedian who's going to appear in the following cities in the next couple weeks and months. Uh, from now until June. All tickets are at AriShafir.com. The new AriShafir.com. Salt Lake City, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, Appleton, Wisconsin, St. Louis, I don't know, Louisiana or something, uh, Buffalo, New York, Louisville, Kentucky, oh, they don't play Kentucky, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Chicago, Illinois. Get tickets for all the shows at AriShafir.com. There's also going to be a New York date in there probably in June. Um, on today's episode... I got nothing else to tell you. Ryan O'Neill and Brant Tobler. You might remember Brant. He was on this podcast before. He's uh, Ryan O'Neill. is a very funny comic who opened for me in Denver. Nine fucking sold out shows. Never done that well. Fucking crazy. It's crazy. Skiing was fun too. So Ryan O'Neill, uh, me and, uh, and Brant sat in the green room. What we did is we flipped it off. We used to do it the Ice House Chronicles. Um, me and uh, O'Neill started and then Brant finished. He was MCing. He lives there. Uh, you might remember Brant as a guy who tried to have his father killed. Yeah, listen to his old podcast on this. I forget which episode it's on, but just look up Brant Tobler. Um, and then when he got done, Ryan went up, Brant came back on the mic, and then I went, and then those guys said whatever the fuck they want. I haven't listened to it. They could defame me, and I will allow it in the interests of defending stand-up comedy. Ryan O'Neill is also on my last two weeks of Patreon. He's on uh, last week and the week before, uh, and he'll might be on another week. Um, maybe I'll space it out a little bit, but... Uh, go to patreon.com slash Ari. And guys, don't forget to subscribe wherever you're listening. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you're listening or watching. I hope you hit that fucking, almost barf from my mouth, subscribe button. Let's uh, start the episode. So all we did was just shoot the shit, just like the old Ice House Chronicles. We had a bunch of comics here. Shot the shit, uh, try to remember how to get on stage at the right time, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start. Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank Podcast, episode, what are you, 460? That's nuts. That's nuts. That's a lot of them. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the Denver Chronicles with Brant Tobler and Ryan O'Neill starts now. All right, close enough. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Here's the yeah. thing, Ari. You yeah. don't have to sink it yourself. I do not have to sink it myself. Yeah, so this I'm noticing is... the uh, uh, crooked, 
crooked, crooked. Yeah, we do it. It's the new style. It's just a new, little off. Uh, Jimmy, <laughs> the you new know, style. It's not to, what is it? Not to masturbate in front of your grandmother. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, the what new style is not to use your grandmother's shawl. No, no, no. He yeah, goes, right, shawl and shut the fuck up. <laughs> What are you, Vogue fucking magazine? That's the great. What do you know about style, you fucking old bitch? You, call you stupid cunt. Yeah, you wrinkled old. <laughs> God, he was good. He uh, was, yeah, I know. I hope I never see him do stand up again. <laughs> because it's, you know what I mean? It's not, you need that, you need that legend to just live as that. As a legend. Yeah. You don't yeah, want to Taylor see. said this. He goes, everybody who dies, comics, but then like everybody is always way greater than, yeah. than what they would have been if they just kept going. Yeah, oh, absolutely. People oh. turn them into these heroes and like... Dude, like, you're like, hey, could... It, and they, they'll sh- I love it because they'll show clips and you'd be like, yeah, they're doing pretty well. I mean, yeah. you know, they're all right, but it's not like... I never see clips where they're just fucking just hammering. Yeah. And they're like, they was a genius. Yeah, that's almost always true. Bob Saget was one of was like, he was a great comic. And that, that one, they... But I've seen, I, I've seen Saget. You know, I was alive to see Saget go up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I saw Saget perform. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you ever do one of those Ice House Chronicles? I did a few of them, yeah. Yeah, this reminds me of that. To yeah, set yeah. it up, everybody, maybe there won't be no introduction. I did a lot of them with Brody. Oh, okay. Oh, Wait, yeah, Brody did a lot of them. What? You're going for jokes. <laughs> I was like, we're at the yeah, Ice Brody. House. We're yeah, doing Brody. fucking... There's 18 comics on here. I know, but it's always so nerve-wracking because you're like, wait, am I up next? Who just got off stage? Yeah, they would have to tell you. Someone would get off stage, tell yeah. you, like, hey, you're up next. So you're like, okay, but that means I got five minutes. Wait, how long? Did you get off and come right here, or did you get off and talk for a minute? Yeah, I never, I never did one of those Rogan ones. Those are packed. Where, or like why, when he did those pod, the podcast too. I remember yeah. hearing that he yelled at a friend of ours. He's like, "Dude, stop fucking talking!" And I was like, <laughs> "I don't know if I would like to do that." Doesn't seem like uh, stop talking. He's like, uh. but it is weird. You're getting a mix of fucking people. The problem is, anytime you don't like know Pete each Holmes, other, T.J. Miller or. I'm trying to think of who else. Just like Miss Pat, they just they're gonna command it. Yes, that's just their mode. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm I I'm one of those guys too. Just because I just start talking, yeah. Oh, shit, you know what I mean. Where it's like if you guys aren't like dude, like we gotta figure out a a path to go down here. We can't just fucking <laughs> do nothing the whole fucking well, time. Well, you need a fucking you need a fucking which I don't have, which is smart. Um, some sort of script or like what are we gonna talk about yeah yeah you gotta fucking you gotta have but then up right now people are going you, you guys aren't fucking doing anything yeah that's right that's right <laughs> you're bucking the trend we are bucking the trend um so it's you me and brant tobler yes brant is on stage now i'll give some of this listen to this get some Okay, it was that was a bad that was a bad that was, that was a bad moment it was a really bad moment um and yeah you'll go up in a second Yep. Brent will come in, and then... Um, and Brent and I don't know each other. Do you really not? I, I mean, I know of him, and we talked uh, a lot. Well, last time he was here was that Thursday. <laughs> He's got money on the three-point contest. Dude, when he came in, I saw I was watching gambling. that. I go, this. He, I know he's gambling. I thought he was just watching, watching. You but called who, it. Who watches on their phone? A three-point contest. Like, do you also, care that much about three? This isn't Bird versus fucking... Yeah. He, he didn't put the phone down. He was like, hey, guys, how are you? And then he sat down with the phone right. And I was right, like, right, that's exactly. a guy with just money. Something himself. on the line. There's he's something gambler, on the line. Dude. He's a legit Vegas comic. Yeah. Yeah, like hardcore. Like he's not fucking around at all. Yeah. She should, he should have his own line of like, you know, Boveda now has one and Barstool is going to have one. And, yeah. And Caesar's book. He should have a Brant Tobler. Like, yeah, I agree. Know, laugh and lose your home or something. I don't know, there's, there's something <laughs> catchy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lie to your wife and figure out how you're gonna fucking <laughs> have her not find out that you have a second mortgage now that you've squandered. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I'm like, I can't gamble, man. I never got into it. It's just like a loser's bet. Well, you used to do. You used to drive down to the it. fucking Hollywood. That's okay because you're playing against drunk Mexicans. I know, but it was easy money. I never saw the fun in it. I was like, if I want to lose five hundred dollars, let's do it somewhere fun. Like where? I don't. Let's go skydiving. I don't know. Let's rent That's fucking it. dirt bikes. I wasn't planning on losing five hundred dollars. Dude, I would rather just get on a plane, fly to somewhere for like eight hours, go out to dinner and fly back. But yeah, you won. Yeah. But also, like, that, did you break that even? was never on the table. The tournaments, I always won. Online, I always lost. Okay. Yeah. I, do you know if online's up and up? Like, it's not. It's for sure not. Okay. So yeah, I don't. you're going to lose your ass on for that. For sure. The odds are against you. It was already you're playing against mathematicians. 
Yeah, I like, guys, oh, no, I'm getting a hunch. Dude, a uh, hunch? Yeah. How do you don't? How do you know the guy doesn't have an algorithm running? He does. While you're, he does. Fucking fuck that. Yeah, they're just hey, like four hands. Hey, you fucking out math rules. nerds exactly. out there! Fuck you! You fuck ruined you. online gambling. <laughs> it was an outlaw sport. <laughs> and you fucking scientists had to get involved. Fucking dork fucks. <laughs> that is um, true. Is that your jacket, Miami Vice? It's not. That's got to be Tobler's. Dude, that is unbelievable. <laughs> that is a great fucking that is a great jacket. That is phenomenal. Yeah, that's a great jacket. So you're okay. Anyway, what should we talk about? Let's. What, what do we got here? How are you liking Denver? That's good. I really like Denver. I don't know if I would move to Denver, but because I'm looking for a place to move part time. Are you really? Yeah. I mean, in the next like five years, I'm planning to like be part time L.A. Ooh. Yeah. What's gonna happen to the DNO? <sighs> DNO. Really I mean, well. I've yeah. Come back, stock up on episodes. <laughs> stock up but when people be like hey assholes this happened seven months ago i'd be like yeah i know but we talked about it when it was current we just didn't release it until you just now gotta make sure not to talk about current events or do those wacky we don't really news. yeah man shot a cockroach Dude. today in wyoming and nobody's gonna be like that wasn't today i remember that story that was years ago yeah everything we do uh is, there's no expiration date on it he'd be like hey i found this story from five years ago about a guy who fucked a horse and i'm like all right <laughs> well we can talk about that never goes those out are evergreen that whenever you're writing a comedy packet you've done way more than i have yeah uh it's just like you need to uh, especially for like a late night it's just so it's like what's the wacky world news what's the wacky world news yeah. and then you're like if you write a joke for that it you can write it for the next packet a year later oh yeah you for sure your own they just want to know if you can formulate a joke they don't it doesn't need to be like the most current it won't be no absolutely <laughs> it fucking it. won't but also it's also the biggest waste of time ever because Nobody ever gets hired and and also they know who they're gonna hire they just want to know if there's jokes that they can steal in there oh They'll have somebody yeah. ride in, like, if you come across any, then we'll fucking... But uh, we already know, the big agencies already have people that are all, were on other staffs in there. Mm -hmm. I heard Kimmel... Uh, right, and they're already represented. I heard Kimmel was looking for a new writer, and it was down to Aaron Lee. Remember Aaron Lee? Yeah, vaguely, our, kind of. Him and, yeah, anyway, he did our uh, David Taylor catastrophe a few times. Oh, okay, okay. He was before Family Guy. But it was before Family Guy, and they go... Um, he was, like, headline, and then Sarah, the rumor was Sarah Silverman comes in and picks up Morgan Murphy's packet, like, this is the one? And they're like, all right, whatever, and we don't care. It's no, just a writer. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like it's a crapshoot. It's a crapshoot. There's plenty of people that could do it. It's just you gotta know. It's all yeah. It's who you know. I actually would be bad at it. Oh, dude, with the last packet I filled out, I go, I'm scared that I'd get hired because this sounds like a nightmare job to me now. What one? It was for uh, uh, John Oliver, and I go turning this out every day. Or even every week sounds like a fucking nightmare now. Can you imagine writing for Corden? Where you have to do the fucking lamest, yeah. suck ass, fucking corny ass shit. You're like, and you have to do, do it every day. And then his directive is like, this is good, but can you steal any of these from other shows and just yeah. repurpose them slightly? <laughs> that's what really we're looking for. No, you have to you're you're appealing to people who are turning it on to fall asleep in front of. Exactly. I don't want it. To laugh it too much. I know. That's why those late night shows are hilarious that people put so much energy. You're like, you realize people just turn this on while they go to sleep. I mean, it's discouraging as fuck. It is. It is. Every night, those guys are giving it their all, and people are just like doing shit, brushing their teeth, walking out, looking at the screen. It's just like morning TV. I know they have to do it for the few people who actually are watching. Yeah. But like, they're just getting dressed and packing their kids' lunches. Yeah. It's just on. Unless you have a break news, we just drop bombs in Iraq. That's like, oh, what? Yeah, <laughs> but then it. they still go back to pack. They're like, oh, well, I wonder how that's going to affect my morning commute. Teddy's still going to eat lunch. It's, yeah, it's not going to affect it at all. So fuck them. Five day with the forecast came out for. Dude, once you have kids, I think it just goes like you're caring for anything else in the world goes out the window. You're just you know, trying to keep people alive. Can you imagine a worse thing to do than have kids? I mean, a lot of times, no. <laughs> I don't Tracy want to alienate said it was, Tracy anybody. Said it was hard, and then once once she had two, and they, the second one started walking, and then going different directions, she was like, "I'm fucked." Yeah, well, you have to you have to day. handcuff them. Hang, that's smart. Shackle the feet. Can you well, can you legally? And then once they're in a dungeon, you're gonna start fucking them. You should uh, yeah, shackle them. Well, because you know they're looking, they're, they're all sweaty and horny. Yeah, shit looking. all over the walls. <laughs> you can't turn it on by the smell of shit. Yeah, of course you're schizophrenic, and you're like, let's fuck these. And then they're gonna have daughters, hopefully, and you can fuck that. Yeah. Oh, all right. There I go. First commercial break. Oh, hi, everybody. Were you watching a podcast? Well, it's time for a sponsorship. Today's episode of Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank is brought to you by Advertising Interruptions. Guys, when you get lost in a podcast and suddenly you can hear the, the tone of the, of, the, of, the, 
of the host change. And you're like, what's going on? Why are they suddenly talking different? Well, you can thank podcast advertising. In podcast advertising, we interrupt uh, generally what you feel is a conversation between two friends in which you envision yourself sitting in the back seat and these two friends talking in the front seat and it's like you're there with them. And with podcast advertisements, it ruins that wall. It makes you think, oh, these guys are just in it for the money. Do they even care about the conversation? Are they just fulfilling an advertiser's whims and desires for them to shill out for their dumb fucking uh, company? Sometimes I think, I know this podcast uh, podcaster and podcast host doesn't, listen, doesn't use this product. For sure not. Uh, I've seen millionaires uh, pimp Cricket Mobile. Uh, they don't even know what that is. It's a punchline to them that they're just finding out it's real when they're at the bank cashing their checks. So guys, next time you look to get distracted from a podcast and wonder why are they talking in such a salesman way, look no further than podcast advertisements. We're here to stay because capitalism takes over everything. Now let's get back to the episode. Thank you, Monetary Overlords, for making this possible. <laughs> Carry the show, Ari. All right. Tell them to get... Let's do it. <laughs> he did it. He did the intro for Run Run Is Easy. <laughs> he said he had to do the intro for Daddy Knows Best, the web series that Daniel should run the over for Run Is Easy. All right. Tell us again. Where am I going to be? Four Wayne. How are they? They're yeah. They're really good. Hell yeah. Dude, how is this club normally? Is it ever bad? Well, you know, it's been um, because we, they're doing vax cards and masks, so it's really tailed off. And tailed off what? What do you mean tailed off? Uh, size of crowds, and we the staff was it was so well run before. It's all new. Yeah, so not all, and it's it's not all new, but uh, so we're getting like, you know, like the turnover rate's crazy. When I first got here, we. If the first two people years we were here for so long yeah, yeah. we're here it was such a family and there's people that's what it was it was a family so it's getting back to that but you know it's just if you sell someone who could sell tickets it's crazy like it's because this is a night where they all know you yeah. this isn't just like a stumble in here we need like a date night these are like real like fill the time comics yeah these are you know? real comedy they're yeah. like comedy fans so and you can make a reference like i started doing a joke and retro's references tim dylan yeah yeah it's like oh either he's that famous or they all just know him in my crowd. He's pretty famous he now, pretty but famous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's you. You know, it's funny. I, Schultz was the first one to do it when I was hosting here, and uh, I and I was like, "Yo, what do you want me to say?" He goes, "You could just say my name." I was like, "Oh, okay, you're that dude." And I was like, "Nothing." He goes, "Yeah." So then I went out and I said it, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Same thing with Tim. Same thing with you. Same thing with. Uh, you know who else had it was the guys. Yeah, you don't have to hype them up. The guys from Super Troopers. Really? They're fucking. Because they were there to see them. I love the those hair, guys. Make the stand up Steven on your arms. Up. Just like uh, you could tell when someone's like, once they when you say their name, they just go fucking. Bonkers. Dude, I did that. Uh, we had a storytelling show. And just like I figured a surprise lineup. And mm -hmm. just the first comic was Shane yeah. Gillis. I was like, all right, guys, are ready for first comic? And I just did that. I was like, Shane Gillis. And they were like, yeah. Yes! Yeah, it was. I, and Schultz was the first one to do it, and I was wow. like, because you know, the old days everybody had a ton of credits, but no one gives a and fuck. And they cared. About, yeah, yeah. Who gives a fuck. <laughs> I mean, oh, when this I, guy has a pocket, it's like either they know already or they don't care. Yeah. When I was starting out, there was times when I got you know lectured for having not doing all the credits. Someone gave me three or four credits, and but I was a young comic just trying to get through my own shit, and then I would there'd be like, hey, make sure you know. I remember one guy was like care about these credits like they're your credits i'm like i'm I trying don't. to worry about my eight minutes <laughs> trying don't. to get past yeah. at the club <laughs> yeah. so but yeah on nights like this when it's i mean there's nothing like it it's fucking it's incredible it's the best club it really is so i this is the first club i did with rogan i'm like i'm pretty sure the very first show and like mike young called out sick or whatever yeah and then i was and he was like dude oh he's killing it i'm like i didn't know <laughs> i just thought all the road was like this it's a cheat code yeah i always tell people if you if you suck here you should just quit if, if for one second you walk out that stage, you don't feel good. Because even on off nights, it's, it's still great. pretty strong. We've had half empty shows here yeah. for sure. But it's still, but on these nights, it's, I mean, if this it'll keep you, I can't go to sleep at night after doing these two nights and you end up staying out. You get bugged. My girl's like, why don't you come home and just go to bed? I'm like, the adrenaline rush of these shows is crazy. Yeah. What are you doing tomorrow? You want a feature? Sam Talent can't come. Yeah. yeah. I'm He's in. a fucking asshole. Where's he at? He just said, hey, Tim Dillon offered me a theater tomorrow, so I can't come. <laughs> like, 
What do you mean you can't come? You're booked 27 hours from now. Yeah. Cunt. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll do it here. Right, I do. I take, I'll do any show here. It's like Red Rocks. What does that mean? I always compare. No, no. I compare this to Red Rocks. Like uh, when I first moved here, people were like, you want to go to Red Rocks? I'm like, yeah. You don't have to tell me. I just want to go to, go to, to shows. Go to what shows. have you seen there? I've seen everything from, I, I mean, I'll go to anything from like DJs to. I would love to see a show there. Oh, you've never seen a show there? Uh, I've, Holy shit. I've walked shit. it like daytime. Oh man, you should. I mean, it's incredible. And you know what's good about it is that it's, a, it's yeah. such a legendary venue that they, a lot of great bands will come through on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, bigger bands that'll do like arenas elsewhere. They just want to play Red Rock. So they have their arena tour booked. So if there's someone you really want to see, you should look at their schedule because, and you could still work your Whoa. weekend, but then fly and in Monday, Tuesday, early. Wednesday. Oh, smart. But like, it's, uh, I mean, it's, I, I've never, yeah, I mean, John Denver said it was, a, if you had to play one more show, for sure, that place. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know what sucks is they do a, they do a comedy show there where you can, so us local comics get to open for a movie. Yeah. So twice I've been booked and twice COVID right. got me and then one time oh. snow got me, which Did I was like. Did it for rain or for snow? They just go Not like, for not rain, happening. for snow. Because I've, I've, I've seen some good concerts in the rain there, like summer rain when it's still hot, but it's like you it was fucking just fun. And you're just fucked up and you're just it was just fun. We just get soaked to the bone. Yeah. Just That's drenched. Great. But, That's great. That's but great. yeah, you it's should like, uh, you should just figure out, go through who you want to see. And they have shows in the winter. I will. I pretty much no, only come I can go skiing. Before no, I they'll, go. oh, no, they'll run through like it's pretty much probably I think probably March through like October. October. Yeah. But you could just come do like, even just do like an off night storytelling show or something, and just just book it around that. I could do that. You're right. Just book, book it around Red Rocks, like, hey, yeah. Because she'll Tuesday. let you do whatever night. Yeah. She just called you her sweet. boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like Denver? Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it, man. It was uh, it's the best. When I was leaving LA, I was thinking here of Phoenix, and I'm so glad I came here. This well, is so much cooler. Than it's Phoenix. close for home. I'm, I grew up like 100 miles north, okay. so I could still go home, but I don't have to be. Well, I mean, I love where I'm from, but it's not really the comedy mecca up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. There <laughs> There's not there? much going on there. So, is there anything there? No, no, no. What's that ski place? Jackson Hole. Jackson is Hole. Is there any place? I asked my agent that goes. Sorry, other people have asked. There's nowhere yeah. to play anywhere near it. There's like there was a cool old theater, but they just never did anything with it. Like they they tried. Like people have definitely tried, but yeah. You could probably put together something, but because there's people there? up there, there's not a lot of lot to do. There's, Are there people even up there? Yeah, during the winter there is. Right. We do one over in like Cody, like an hour away, but it's just so beautiful up there. But that doesn't even count. Like it's technically part of Wyoming, but it's not. What? You know, like why well, compared to like California? Like California's Fuck. huge. There's like Malibu or like the good parts. That's like Jackson Hole. The the rest oh, yeah. of the state is like Sacramento or like. Stockton. I love it because that's where I'm from. But like when I lived in LA and I'd always talk about how much I loved home and then my friends would be like, oh, I want to go. I was like, well, you would fucking hate it. I only like it <laughs> from I have like nostalgia there. from like uh -huh. growing up there. And then they're like, well, Jackson Hole. I go, well, Jackson Hole is like, like when I lived in LA, like Malibu was there, but I never, I would maybe go there once to see what Malibu is, but it wasn't a really a part of my LA experience, you know? It's just so much money up there. It's just... It's not for like now. If you go to Yellowstone, to the park is cool. What are the drugs in Wyoming? Meth. Meth's meth. Meth's really bad. And that's then, like the uh, farmer drug. Yeah. If there's like farm area, then like. Yeah, meth is the one that they do those scary like. Uh, they do the scary billboards where they just have people that just look like fucking. I lost shit. Me to meth. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the worst one I ever saw I was driving through Arizona and there was one that it was just a jail cell. Now this is obviously like 10 years ago yeah. because they could never get away with it now. And it just said, did you ever think you'd spend a romantic night here? Dot, dot, dot. No Me way could they get away with it. Meth that. will change that. No way they're going to get, like, you're making straight, light of yeah. rape and homosexuality. I was making a joke about it. Like <laughs> you're just saying, if you do meth, you're going to get ass raped in prison. I was like, just say no. I'll just say no to that. But yeah, meth is like, <laughs> you're like, well, yeah, yeah. meth is bad. And then, also, they never tell you the full story. Chances are you won't end up there. No, no. You know? <laughs> yeah, so we... Uh, or it's like the drunk driving things. Or like, you're going to end up in a hearse or, or prison. And you're like, but no, I've drunk drive plenty. And yeah, yeah. neither one of those have happened. <laughs> yeah. like, don't I, do it. But like... I, I end up in a blowjob some of the times. So honestly, it wasn't... It was a bad decision in hindsight, but... <laughs> you shouldn't be getting blown while I'm driving drunk. Yeah. <laughs> but... 
But yeah, no, it's meth up there. There's not, I mean, Coke a little bit. Like my dad, that's my dad was a drug dealer when I was a kid up there and he was moving in, but he was bringing in a lot of Coke because the railroad goes through there. So the railroad, if you work for the railroad, those guys make a lot of money, but they're like degenerates. So they just want to, so my dad set up in like the strip club there and, uh, and just sold drugs. Yeah. Just, and they would, they get them, you know, get, get girls in there and, uh, because there's nothing else to do really. People in Wyoming, they just drink a lot. And then you get a couple of DUIs and you stop. <laughs> She's told me you work in like North Dakota for like on like the mines or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it was just like uh, the oil rig, something like that. He was, yeah, the oil rigs. Yeah, they, they got so much money. Work. They just give you so much. Yeah. Like 70 grand for two months. And then it's just like spend it though. Yeah. But they don't know what they're doing. They, I mean, they just all come back with like a big ass truck and then they fucking plow through that money. They don't know what they're yeah. doing. And it's shit work, man. I, I got a lot of friends that it was like a good bailout in wyoming if you couldn't really do anything else you, you just go to fucking do this rig shit that's why like in rock springs wyoming which is a little town probably population like i'd guess like fifteen thousand. yeah three strip clubs what but it's just because it's near the, the rigs and then all the oil rig guys will just come there so these strippers come in from all over because it's just fucking dumb dudes that work on oil rigs that never see hot chicks that'll just you could just con like, out what? it yeah that you could you could take half their paycheck because they you ever get taken by a stripper yeah of course yeah. i got well i went the first time with hookers i got hookers the first when i was moving to phoenix we never knew what uh <laughs> so me and three of my buddies were moving to phoenix and we stopped in albuquerque yeah. and we got hookers we, we ordered two hookers for eight hundred dollars there's four of us so we each two hundred dollars each which was a lot and we and we were we were barely 21 so we went and bought condoms and all this shit. Was, that is a lot yeah and then these two girls came came into the room and it was like uh they just had the old like uh hotel alarm clock radio and they came uh, in we gave them the money and then they they uh they danced for like a minute and and took their tops off so we saw some titties and then before we knew it they were gone you know then they put their shit on but they already had the money and they were gone the greatest hooker story ever heard, you have you I, I i'm not i won't say that comic's name because i don't know if you want to tell a story but he finally <laughs> dude hooker stories in general is one of those who's like maybe i can't say but here's it, the but thing yeah, but what so when i started dating this girl in vegas because when i lived in vegas my boss used to buy us hookers when i would work for the professional gamblers but you just got to be honest because <laughs> Like on the second date, she was like, have you ever got a hooker? This girl I dated for like three years. And I was like, no. Then you got to ride that lie out for the rest of That's your right. life. Because like, she'll get mad at me if she finds then out. Then your friends bring it up. And I was like, I should have just said yes. But one of my friends, I told him, you know, hookers aren't the, the worst thing. So then he finally got the balls to order a hooker in New York. So he called a hooker. And then like a big bodyguard came, like big black bodyguard came to the door first. Knocked on the door and was like, hey. You know, the girl's down t- downstairs. I just want to go over the rules with you. You're going to treat her with respect. You treat her like, she, you, you know, and gave him all these rules. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. And, and it was like, I would love to treat her with respect. If you, uh, and if you uh, do anything, just know I'm right downstairs. If you do anything to her, I'll come, I'll be, when she leaves, I'll come down and I'll just fuck you up. And he was like, he, he is so scared because he was first scared to get a hooker. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I promise I'll be on my best behavior. I'll treat her respect. And he's like, okay, that'll be $800. Then he gave the guy $800. He goes, all right, I'll send her right up. And then, of course, oh my she God. just, oh my I was God. like, I thought it was the greatest oh hustle my God. ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Be, oh my, and he must be like, nine times out of town, they're like, no, no, no. I'll send her down with the money. Yeah. We're done. Like, sure. Obviously, I'd try to fleece well, you. If you. But this dude didn't know, oh. like, streak. He doesn't, you know. He's just one just, of those where that guy's coming down. He's like, hey, yeah. Jess. We're not yeah, doing anything today. Let's go. Yeah. Well, I would do no that rush. every time. not coming. I would do that every time. It's every just time. like a free shot. But he, the sad part is said, he just sat there. And he was like, How long did he, wait? <laughs> he was waiting for the knock on the door and then there's no knock. And he's like, after a while, he's like, then it hit him like, oh, fuck, they got me. You know, it's that first moment where you're like, just when it creeps in, you're like waiting, waiting, like nervous. OK, and you're like fixing your stuff and it's like waiting again. It's like, OK, wait, you know, put the music on. You're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's still nothing. And then it's like, uh, oh, like it must be as soon as like, wait, is he not? Fuck. Yeah. I'd say the one that got me. So I got, when I lived in Vegas, I got hooked on massage parlors because I didn't know how they worked. We didn't, or I, I guess maybe we had them in Wyoming. I didn't know. So then one day my boss is like, You never got a massage? I was like, No. And he just, me and my buddy gave us $200. He goes, Go. It's like middle of the day. So we went in. I'll never forget walking out. <laughs> I see my buddy just make eye contact. Like, did it happen? He's like, yeah. So then I would, I would just go out and try to get. Was your massage the same as mine? Like, <laughs> yeah. I think so. So I would go out and just try to get girls. And then if I couldn't on the way home, I'd just go to a massage parlor. But then they taught me the game. So 
A massage is sixty dollars an hour. So you come in with a hundred dollar bill, and then you hand them a hundred dollars. Tip ahead of time. And then yeah, so then so me. then they take the sixty out, and then they come in. They tell you to lay on the thing. So you lay on the bed. Then they put the forty on the nightstand over there. So then they'll massage you, get near your dick, and and then they'll be like, uh, you know, always you cop, you cop. No, I'm not a cop. And they'll be like, <laughs> okay, you know, hundred dollars. Go no. And then you just go. You point to the money on the nightstand. Say no, forty. Yeah, over. yeah, right there. You go that. And they go, no, it was 80. You go, no, that. Go, oh, it was 60. You go, no, it was fucking 40. Just stay strong. And then you, uh, so then you get it, you know, and it's, it's great. I loved it, man. They were so good at it. I always make the joke like Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 hours. Like they were <laughs> good at it. Put the baby oil on and then they, the, my favorite part is then you- Baby oil on your dick? Yeah. So they oh. pull out the baby oil, go to town. And then they, when you come off your stomach, then they bring in this warm, warm cloth. And then a little cup of water, like you get like at the dentist office, cold water and warm cloth clean you off and then go, right? So I always <laughs> I always just got the hand job. Dixie cup. But I would get I'd get mad at myself the next day, even though at the time I was making a ton of money working for the gamblers. I had but I still you wake up the next day, you're like, fuck, man, I gotta just jerk myself off. That's a hundred dollars, right? So then I would get and I'd go there drunk and then I'd be like, I'll make this bitch earn it. I would try so hard not to come, you know? I was like, I'm not just gonna, so good at it. I'm not gonna let her off the hook. It's like, you gotta earn this $100. So one time I went, I was real fucked up and she's just trying, switching hands. She's like, you too drunk, you too drunk. And I'm like, no, just stay, I'm just go. thinking about baseball go. hard. Yeah. yeah. So she keeps working, arms are tired. Then she goes, uh, you want blow job? I go, yeah, okay. She goes, $100. I go, okay. So then she pulls out a condom. She gets me kind of hard, and then she puts a condom on, and then she blows just one time down, just through like a this. condom. Yeah, with a condom on. But I, I'd had a ton of hand jobs. No, I, I'd, I'd had hookers give me hand, uh, blow jobs with condoms before. That's they kind of make, some of them make you do that. Tijuana was like they put it on with their yeah, mouth. Yeah, but they were so good, I didn't worry. And I was, and then of course. I just hate condoms anyway. So the girl puts it on and then she just goes down one time. And of course I just get limp and then she takes it off. Go, you too drunk. So she goes back and just fucking works her ass off. Then I finally come. Right. So then I, <laughs> so then I stand up, I stand up. I, or she brings, she brings in the towel and the cup of water and then you get dressed and they come in and they'll usually walk you out, but I still owed her a hundred dollars technically. So she comes in and she's like, you owe $100. I go, no, you didn't even blow me. Nothing happened. And she goes, $100. And I'm like embarrassed. So I'm looking down at the ground. And this bitch just hauls off and slaps me as <gasps> hard as I can. As she, I've never been hit like this by men in my life like this. What? Because I wasn't even, I was kind of embarrassed. And I was like, no, I don't owe you. And she hauls off and slaps me so hard. Like spit come out of my face. Like, And I was like, and then. It hurt? Oh, it hurt. Yeah, especially I wasn't even expecting That's it. That's crazy. I've been hit by a man and, and it does not hurt. And then I was like, uh, hold on, hold on. I'll go get it. I'll go get it because there's a, a casino right next door. I said, like, okay, I'll go get it. I'll go get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I just ran out the doors, got my car and left because there's 50 other within a two mile radius. Like, I could never come back. Yeah, back. I could just got blacklisted. For, or, and I probably could come back. They don't. They, Did you have any intention of actually getting the money? No, no, I, I, I was mad ever. I got, no, well, if, you know what, I would have paid if, because one time I got in big trouble with, uh, <laughs> my bosses were super rich dudes, so we were in Phoenix, <laughs> and we, uh, and we went, and, and they got a high-end escort, right, and I had a girlfriend at the time, and she bought me, back then they had those, like, Mitchell Ness jerseys, like, the really fancy, like, throwback jerseys were really popular, uh -huh. and my girl had bought me one, and then, so they're like, so my boss is like, all right, you can go first with this girl. Cause he would just, so I was like, okay. So then Ugh. she gave me, she just gave me a blowjob for $200 in the bathroom. So I, I, she comes in, she gives me a $200 blowjob and then, uh, I pay her the $200. And then she puts a condom on, goes, but then she gets makeup all over my fucking jersey. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, so then when she, when I come, then she gets up and then she walks out and their purse, their, my $200 is on top of the fucking thing. So I just take the shit back oh my and God. then I walk out the room and then we were staying at this big resort with all these golf courses. So we had just, I just had a golf cart and I just like knew I was, I was like, fuck it, I'm out of here. And I took this golf cart. And then my, my boss was like, call me. He's like, did you take that fucking hooker's money? Cause now she wouldn't fuck him because uh -huh. she, her money was gone. So then the next night we went to dinner and then I got this big lecture. And then I was like a 22 year old kid. And they were like, you got to fucking, if they're going to blow, you got to, you can't take it back. And I was like, <laughs> Because my my brother, I mean, you can though. I mean, it's can, right there. Yeah. Well, it but what kind Anyone of fucked in up Vegas their game. is like, come on, dude. But like when we lived in Vegas, my brother, we used to. So we had to before I start working for the gamblers, we lived in this shitty like weekly hotel you'd rent by the week, and uh -huh. then these guys would they would call hookers, and then they would come. And then they just try to spit game at him and try to talk him into do it for free because they're like twenty one year old dudes. And I was like, 
you guys are gonna get fucking killed. You can't waste their time like that. Someone really is gonna come to the door. Like th- yeah. this isn't a game, you know. Because I used to see the pimps. So in the morning when I when I worked for the game, would you have to go? I'd have to college football start early on Saturday and Sunday. I'd go run around and make my bets. Yeah. And then the uh, yeah. What's that? What do you mean? Is he done? Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> Guys, sorry to break into the podcast, but I got to tell you about my dates. I'm really sorry, but I really got to tell you about my dates. This is all I do. I'm a stand-up comedian. First and foremost, this is what I like to do. So here's where you can see me, live on the road. How's that? Uh, This Saturday, me and Steve Renazisi are going to be in Jordan's Landing, Utah. Um, Just two of us and one special guest, maybe a second one from New York. Um, Saturday, one show only at 10 p.m., 9.45 p.m. It's not Ogden. It's Jordan's Landing. It's, It's close to Salt Lake City. Uh, we just added one because all the Sunday shows are sold out. So me and Steve are going to be there early because we, you know, we're doing a 3 p.m. show the next day. So come out. Should be fun. Uh, I'm doing a little bit longer there too. Then at the end of March, me, Big J, and Robert Kelly are going on tour together. We're doing Fort Wayne, Indiana at Summit City Comedy Club on the March 24th. Then um, Grand Rapids, Michigan on March 25th at 20 Monroe Live. And Detroit, March 26th at the Fillmore. That's Detroit, March 26th, Fillmore Theater. Tickets for all those shows are at arishafir.com. Um, then we got Appleton, Wisconsin. This is uh, April now. St. Louis at Helium. Buffalo at Helium. At the, both of those at the end of, uh, the end of April. And then May, Louisville. A couple more dates coming soon. And big announcement, Minneapolis and Chicago is going on sale. Uh, use promo code JEW. Check out March 7th at 10 a.m. local time. Um, the Pantages, is that what it is? Hold on, let me look. Minneapolis is the, oh, it's on the Minneapolis Comedy Festival. The Pantages Theater. Oh, that's cool. Uh, on, um, on June 17th in uh, Chicago, June 18th at the Vic. Use promo code JEW. 10 a.m. local time, March 7th. That's this Sunday. Uh, you get tickets at rishafir.com or on those websites at Pantages and Pantages, Pantages in Minneapolis and the Vic in Chicago. But go to rishafir.com. They should be, uh, hopefully, they'll be on there. March 7th um, is the pre sale. Get tickets before everyone else has a chance to get the fucking good seats. And then I'll have a, I'll have an update for, Jesus, for a, a New York show in June also. Um, all right, you guys, that's my tour dates. Click on the fucking extra info right now for tickets to all those shows or go to rgfear.com right now. Get tickets. If I mention your city, fucking get tickets right now. This fucking new hour is killing it. Uh, all right, let's get back to the episode. I heard a massive boom and I'm like, I, is he getting off? I'm like, no, that's just, he's just killing. Dude, I, yeah, oh, wait, hold on, let me get on the mic. Wait, you're up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, Dude, so I, I've closed. And it, my closer is not one where you're gonna follow it with anything else. So I was like, so I was like, well, we're gonna do some crowd work. And I was like, this is what happens when you close and then you have to keep going. <laughs> okay, we shall. All right, tell Brand to come back here. Um, I don't know what you guys were talking about. What are my plugs? Oh yeah, hey, check out first of all, since this is going on Patreon, I believe. Check out Beach Cops on Patreon because you're already on there. It is a mind expanding. Ah, you fuck, dude! Did you just put your hand on your balls? You fucking dickhead. Uh, yes. Check out Beach Cops, especially if you used to do drugs and you don't do drugs anymore because it feels like you're on drugs. They're two and a half, three hours long. They're fucking hilarious, and we go until we lose our fucking minds. Also. Check out the Danish and O'Neill podcast, which is free on everything. Apple, Spotify, and whatever the fuck else. Oh, they're loving Ari. No, dude, I don't, totally don't. 
I actually thought I was like, all right. But you know when you close and you're like, oh, yeah. okay, here we go. Well, that's the thing too. If you close and then, are you still recording? These oh, are yeah, we're oh, you I and say, I. It's if, just you and I now. Oh, it is. Oh, he's like, keep going. I was to say, if you close and then we gotta take this off, keep and going. then you uh, start another bit, and then I walk out in the middle of it. It's like, fuck, I close so good. Just let me close. Dude, on time. That's why I didn't. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do some crowd work. But you, you know, when you have the closer, yeah, yeah. And they've already like, yeah, and I'm like, cool, dude. dude by the way, I'm, I, dude, I don't. I actually found it very oh, sure it entertaining. Fun, yeah. yeah, I was like, fuck. She came in. She's like, you're supposed to be on. I was like, okay, in like a minute or two. She's like, no, he's calling your name. I was like, oh shit. I, I think I go? did like. I think I, I did eight. You know, sometimes you're like, I do eighteen and a half, and I was like, uh, all right. Yeah. Well, my only choice here is now to fucking ruin that for another yeah, yeah. minute. <laughs> so yeah, I was bad. like, yeah. How was it? Great. Dude, they're fucking great. They're Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about it in here, just how how lucky. I mean, moving here is the best. The shows are fucking. Dude, amazing. this is like you can't get this anywhere else. This is not. <laughs> Yeah, wait, like and I you're said, leaving tomorrow. You're not doing these last I know. Shows. Yeah, he said he had another guy, and then I don't know what happened to the other guy. Well, but you're doing it, right? Yeah, I'm with yeah, him yeah. tomorrow, so. Um, yeah, I think he... Also, because I, I was at the condo, and he had some friends coming in, so they moved me to that uh, to a hotel. Oh, really? So I was like, you know, it all comes down How to money. How's the condo? It's great, right? Oh, the condo's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I remember, I, like, five years ago, this is, the, this is the best comedy condo there is. Yeah. Well, I did a... I, did, there's a, I don't know if you ever did Colorado Springs. You ever do a show there? No. There's a club down there, and they used to have this condo that was so fucking bad. And I, I, it, like, changed my life. I was doing shows down there in, in this miserable condo in the hood. Like, I would say where I was at on stage, like, <laughs> give the cross streets, and the crowd would just be like, oh, my God. Dude, that's they, always a bad. They thought it was a joke. I go, no, that's, I'm really at this fucking spot. So then I'll never forget, I was sitting in this just the worst comedy condo, and it was a, a TV with the VCR still attached to it. Remember those? Yeah, yeah. It? And I was watching Louie's show at the time, just eating ramen noodles. I was like, I got to fucking change. My, I got to change my life. And then I just <laughs> booked like a 60 city tour, not like a, a big one with clubs. I just did bar shows and shit. Yeah. And I was like, because I like I would just go do bar shows because if I go to these little towns, they treat me like I'm a king. And also, dude, that's where. Yeah. And they can make the, more money. And, and like, it's a better like it's a fun crowd because yeah. they're like, we're here to fucking party. Yeah. And they're rowdy. I like a little rowdy. Like, I, I don't I don't want to really, like disrupt the show, but I like somebody who's not afraid to answer some questions yeah. and with a little passion, you know? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, it was like North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska. So I'd go to these little towns. I just do a door deal. I'd call up a bar and go, hey let me do a show and they'd be like how much i go to zero i'll just charge a ticket at the door and then you keep you get all, all the, the drinks and they'd be like well we do karaoke at like 8 30 on fridays i go sweet i'll do the show at seven try to get everyone yeah. to stay it charts like a 10 or 12 dollar ticket but then if i get like 50 people that's like 500 that's, that's way all more you. than i wake in a for club. a night yeah. and then the people would be like i can't believe you came to our town like i was a fucking hero i was like but it was that comedy condo when i was like I see why you hear these horror stories of like comedians killing themselves on the road. I was like, I'm a super happy dude in that moment. Yeah. I was like, I should, well, I, I don't know if I have to kill myself, but I should get a job or something. Dude, it's tough when you wake up and there's, uh, you don't know anyone and you don't know the town and you're like, I have a lot of time to kill before this fucking show yeah. tonight. And you're like, I'm in a, I'm already in a bad state. Like, what's this going to be like in eight more hours? Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's great when you get like, I mean, that's why. It's like Rogan and Ari. That's why they started bringing yeah. people on the road with them. Always. It's like, why wouldn't you if you can afford it? I would bring your friends. Do it. Yeah. I mean, people always, I, try, I don't go on the road as much because I'm not at that level where I could bring people. Yeah. I'm but yeah. like, why don't you go on the road? I go, if I'm in like Dayton for five days by myself, I'll, I'll go, is it, it's cold or something. <laughs> I'm like the first time through, it was cool. So like not to shit on Dayton, but you go there and there's like Dayton has like well, their one cool spot to eat and one cool yeah. like antique thrift stop store or something but after i've done all those once then like the next time i'm like that's what these guys degrees, i'm like fuck mm -hmm. this man i remember bird always used to be like he's like by saturday i'm suicidal uh, i love what bird does just book shows around like events he wants to go to yeah that's what ari does yeah. too he's like uh we'll go here and then we'll go skiing yeah and it's like that's the way you really need but some guys are like no because i gotta be somewhere else and it's like dude i don't gonna work yourself to death well, yeah I don't know, uh, but also this is I'm I'm not at that level yeah, either, so no, I don't I mean, fucking know what the fuck it is. <laughs> what, what were you guys talking about? Hooker stories? Yeah, we were just doing uh, hooker stories about. I don't even know how we got on it, and then I was just telling them just Vegas stories about. Are you massage. a hooker guy? I, I, I dabbled in it, but, but <laughs> I it was uh, you didn't go pro. It was massage parlors at first, but then it was. Uh, but then I, I got really into massage parlors. But yeah, but 
I, I definitely. So I worked for. I used to work for professional gamblers. These rich dudes. I was a runner, and I would just run around and make bets, and it was all cat. It was crazy. It, it would yeah, take I remember you telling me yeah. that. But then sometimes we, he would get hookers, and then so then. Because it's an intimidating thing to get into, so it was luckily I had a Hookers mentor. Yeah. or get no, the gambling. No, gambling too, but like, <laughs> I think, you know, I think uh, the hookers, you know, once it was good to have him kind of show me what to do. <laughs> show I, was the ropes I was talking about how- <laughs> Was he, he pushing your ass while no, you were fucking? No, He's but like, he, uh, <laughs> he, he, he taught me the, the hooker game. Well, I, I just what to get like a better deal or how to ask well, for it to, like in the massage parlor. Yeah, just how to not get ripped off and just okay. like. Oh, you mean how not to get like robbed? Well, I learned that too, but like, it's so funny. I'm 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 writing this book. I wrote a book. Yeah, I saw it. No, I have another. book. I have some questions it. about yeah, yeah. your book too because I don't know anything about that world, and I'm oh yeah, I'm interested. I'm fascinated with oh, not yeah. to get in, but I'm just like I love to know the oh, yeah, mechanics of that but shit. I, have, I wrote another book um, that I can't. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, can I have a beer? Just a Coors Light draft? Thank I'm you. good for now. Thank you. Um, so I wrote a book. I, I left LA and I was writing this other book and it's called You Couldn't and You Won It. And it's 10 girls that I fucked that most dudes couldn't and 10 girls I fucked that most dudes won it. <laughs> so I was almost done with it. And then I met my fiance now at the time. To- and I you're like, my- I can't publish but I was like, And she's like, you can put it out. I was like, I can't put it out. It would drive you crazy because it's. Did you talk to the women? Too? Or did you go back and talk to the no, women? No, no, no. I just oh, talked yeah. to Dell. Okay. I mean, they're not going to be happy about it. I don't name any names, yeah. but it's like. But they'll know. If- a couple of them I'll probably have to like, you know, I'll show you the, I'll tell you the list real quick. Like, uh, um, and so your lady, she's like, I could handle it. And you're like, she you. She says she can, but she can't. Would I, she read it? No, would you think she would read the book? She said or I she wouldn't read it, it, but the thing is. Yeah, that's a tough. I would have to do promotion for it, and then it, and then she <laughs> just be, you're on bar stool going yeah, like yeah. through her timeline, and it'd be like, oh, uh, there's a time I got to. And that's it. the problem, especially when you get a relationship, and it, she, she's not in the comedy no, world. No, no, no. So yeah, she, so then she'll be like, I saw your boy. Wait, you married or no? No, we're engaged. Oh yeah, so I saw your fiance, and uh, he was saying some pretty crazy yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, well, her friends would be like. Or a family or anyone to be like, you know, like your future husband just gets. <laughs> so here, I'll, I'll give you the rundown. So like, dude, I was ashamed to even tell like my wife, like, because when I went to Amsterdam, I used to go to Amsterdam, like I've been a few times and things just got out of hand yeah. to the point where I was like, I have to leave Amsterdam now because it was just like, you know, the drugs and yeah. then the hookers and everything. And like you, th- it's funny when you tell your friends, but when you have to tell yeah. your wife, you go, oh, this doesn't sound very cool. And it's, and she's well, we sad were, about it. We were talking about that because I made that. So the, my prior girlfriend that I dated in Vegas on like the second or third date, she's like, have you ever had a hooker? And then I liked uh-huh. her. Yeah. And I started a relationship. So then I said no. But then I had to, we ended up dating for like three and a half years. I had to ride that lie. And then I had to tell my friends. I never wanted like. Yeah. Like, it's tough to let you got to. I'm like, I just got to be honest. Thank yep. you so much. That's why I told. I just told my wife because I was like, first of all, I talked about it on podcasts before, yeah. too. So but it's funny when you're, everyone's just making jokes. But when she's like, oh, OK, yeah, it's, I, it's very I mean, sad. I know, and it's and, you know, and my fiance's gorgeous. I'm sure she's fucked a ton of dudes. Yeah. But if she brings it up, I'd be like, you can't well, shut up. I don't no one wants to hear this. But if I bring it up, I'm like, it's for work. Yeah. Content. <laughs> yeah. So I try to be fair about that, because as much as she because. My other, the ex-girlfriend, the Vegas one was like, oh, you can go get a massage. I wouldn't be mad. And I was like, in my head, I was like, don't fall for this. Yeah, yeah. You might think you wouldn't be mad or so. But that's the thing also with lady. Like I, you want a lady that's been around because first of all, less likely to leave you because she's seen everything else (laughs) that's around. Number two, she knows how to fuck. It's not like something she's like, yeah, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. You're like, cool. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. And you can just get into it. You don't, it's always weird when people are like, yeah, she better not fuck a lot of guys. Like, I don't care Yeah. at this point. I I just don't want to know. Yeah. That's what I don't, I I used to be like jealous when I was young. And then I realized, first of all, you can't stop it. The more you sweat somebody about it, they'll just like one of my buddies, he's just so jealous. And his girls always cheat on him. Yeah. You know, so he'd be like, you got to be home. And then they end up just fucking some dude in the park in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. It's like, and the, and then like, if, if dudes are hitting on your girl or if she gets likes, I'm like, if your girl doesn't get likes on Instagram, your girl's awful. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't get mad at that. Like, dude, I want to tell these girls, quit giving pussy to these pouty ass dudes. Just tell them no more. Yeah. And the more you tell, like, the more you try to get your girl not to cheat on you, 
then you're just like so again my friend he's just an asshole to his girlfriend all the time so then what happens is all her friends and her mom and her sisters are always just trying to get her to cheat on him or break up yeah i go you got everyone working also, against you because you're a you, psycho you gotta be uh, yeah you gotta be cool just find somebody that you that's cool to you and you can be cool too yeah. and you're good yeah it is weird though i dated a girl who and she uh had fucked this guy who was like kind of or became high profile so like in one week we saw three movies that he was in like we watched yeah. one in the theater one on tv and i was like jesus christ who was it can i can't say? i can't say oh <laughs> yeah well i, well, I don't want to say it's just two i have a similar one would well, not i have a different one and i've told this story a bunch of times so i won't go through it but uh josh jackson the, fa- the oh baby, yeah yeah baby, he fucked my girlfriend one time uh, big old hog josh jackson big old hog josh jackson so uh and now if fucking anything Mighty Ducks or he does any, luckily his career's going in the other direction. Yeah. Because if he ever does anything, I just get texts like, you see what Josh Jackson is like. Also, it's good now because what is he, 45 years yeah. old or something? It's not like you're looking at Josh Jackson, 28 years yeah. old, prime of his, now he's got like kids probably and shit. Yeah. It's no, easier. I, I think he got caught cheating on his wife or something. Like, oh, like, with, that's Josh Jackson. <laughs> with that big hog. Yeah. That big but, hog's got a fuck. But then like I say, what I do, tell the story on stage is like, but I deserved it. I cheated on her with That's like thing, regular. Yeah. I can't sit here and play like poor victim. I mean, she was in Laramie, Wyoming. He was a fucking humongous movie yeah. star, dude. I don't. People, I say you have like that. Get out of the the free one, whatever it's called. I was like, even if I hadn't cheated on her, I, don't, I mean, the dude is Josh Jackson. He had a puppy in his room. He's a fucking dude, movie star with a. That's puppy. That's insane. When you told me that he <laughs> that he lured him in by saying yeah, I have a cheating. puppy and there was a fucking puppy <laughs> in there. Come on. Also, the weird thing about I think like cheating up to like age. 30 or so it's fine yeah like dude it's just no it is like look it's going to happen it's always weird when people it's like dude i don't know especially if you're like 19 20 that's just how it like uh, you don't know anything what do you think you're gonna la- stay forever uh, my thing was always like well i'm not gonna be with this person forever and this is a pretty good opportunity and i guess it's kind of a dick move but i also you're thinking with a fucking completely polluted mind yeah i, I mean, mean if once you here's my once you get engaged then the take the cheating off the table yeah, but I fucked some married chicks before, and it was like, and then people were mad at me. I was like, I'm not married. Yeah, that was they. They did it. One time I fucked this married chick. I tried not to forever, I, I'm, and I'm not lying to you. I said no, 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 and I knew her. And then one time we were drinking, and then she still tried like hook up with me in the car, and I was like no. And I went home, and I got to my house. I was so proud of myself. She called. She's like, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and she's like. And then she hit me with this. She's Ugh. like, what are you not a man? Are you some kind of fucking pussy? Oof. Like a dumb idiot. I fucking drunk drove over to her house and fuck like, but I'm just such a dumb how many dude. How many times she pulled that one out? I, I mean, that's know. like, like but it get worked. over here. Show me, prove to me you're a fucking man. <laughs> I mean, I was probably like 26 at the time. I'm 44. I hope it wouldn't work now, but man, that thing cut like a knife when she's just like, what are you not a man? You're dude, at 26. I was like. Here we go. Yeah, that's you have nothing to show, so yeah. you're like, ah, uh, yeah, I'll go fucking totally show this. Caught. Yeah, she fucking moved. I, I've been another thing I said. I've been telling this story on stage about this too. Twice in my life, girls have fucked me, and then they woke up the next day and they never drank again. Like I was their <laughs> rock bottom. They're Jesus like, Christ. I fucking, I fuck Brand Tobler. I have to change my life, dude. Have you ever? I've had. I had that happened to me <laughs> when I was 34. I went to Mexico for a wedding. And it got so out of hand that afterwards I was in a, such a dark hole. I go, I gotta, I gotta fucking get my life together. <laughs> I I gotta get my life. This is ridiculous. Like I can't. You, you know when you you're like I'm living like I'm 19 yeah, yeah. and I'm 30. I go this. Yeah, this can't go on, man. Like it was just you felt dirty and fucking weird instead of like oh this is cool. It was no longer cool. I had something similar, not with the drinking though, but I I went in to my buddy's wedding in Cabo. And then <laughs> that's where I was. Yeah. So we're doing the, we have a great time. Everything's great. And then people start posting the pictures on Facebook and I'm looking through the pictures. And then I just see this like fat dude with a big bald spot in the back of his head. And I was like, who, who's that? And then I was like, Oh my God, that's, that's me. You. <laughs> <laughs> I go, Oh fuck. That's me. That's what I looked like that whole trip. I, I didn't realize I was that fat. I had, I didn't, I always wear a hat. I mean, I know yeah. I'm going bald a little, but I didn't know. In the I'm sun with you, dude. I got the same thing. Like I, my just hair it. I know, yeah. You, you, but then when you're in the pool or something, I was like, I was really, it took me a second. And then I was like, oh, man, I got it. But you got to do it. Like, I can't do What am I going to do? I'm going bald. And then I was like, uh, I was just like, 
it 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 was crazy that I was like, oh, that's me. I, I just I just never. I think I kept a pretty potty, positive body image. Where I never. And then you're yeah. like, <laughs> but then I was like, I don't look like. I've seen that. that dude. Yeah. I've seen when it's shocking, especially if you're losing your hair and you see a shot from behind. You go, yeah. When, oh, when it's wet, man, dude. When it's oh, it's wet. wet, dude. wet that's dude. what it was. Like I was a, like, oh man, yeah. there's no fluff or anything. I just keep, yeah, dude. And it's funny. It's like you find try to find a million ways. You're like, you'll pull it. You'll try to fluff it up on the back, and you're yeah. like, and at this point, I'm like. Fuck it, yeah, man. There's nothing out. I can do. <laughs> I usually go ahead, but like when I'm performing, I actually had my hair. I, I started growing it out because I was told my wife I was going to go with a ponytail, uh-huh. like pull it back over the balls. Yeah. Right, and then she finally was like, I'm I don't know if I could fuck I you. I did the same thing during the pandemic. Had it long, was going for the same thing. And then I was like, God. And then one day, yeah, what I day like, you look like, shit, same <laughs> know, thing happened. But I looked at a picture. I was like, you're like, it's no longer oh, a gag, God, man. This looks like, this yeah. looks like shit. And, you're like, and it's these not pictures a gag. never go away. Dude, I went I to was my, trying to show someone a picture the other day. My buddy's in a band and he brought me on stage to sing with him. Really cool moment. And I was so happy to have his photographer take a picture. And then when I look at it now, I was like, oh, I, I hate the way I look in this picture. I just have <laughs> shitty curl. It's just like white. I just look awful. Dude, I, I, should, I went to like my haircut lady after like 10 months of growing it out. And she's like, oh, my God, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> and I was like, just cut it all off. Give it to yeah. me short. Well, my girlfriend's a hairstylist. My fiance's a hairstylist. So she that's my dream, care. dude. Yeah, my great. dream is to have that. But well, you know, I do something other. Another stupid thing I don't do anymore is when I'm in like a bad rut, or if I'm just not doing good, or a little down or something. I think I'm gonna fucking shave my beard <laughs> and fucking change change things. And then when I yeah. shave my beard, I look even shittier. Yeah. I was like, why did I do this? Now I look like I felt like shit before. <laughs> now, but if I shave, I look like shit. Shit. And I'm like, dude, I do the same. But every like two or three years. I go, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to shave my head and bick it. Oh, and I yeah. fucking do it. And then ever, I'm like, I am like, I have a very supportive wife, but pe- I, sometimes they'd be like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> you know, have you ever bicked your head? No, I'm scared dude, to death, man. Dude, it I'm is, uh, you go out those first week when it is just bright white, you do look like you're uh, dying. You look I like you're fucking dying. I think my head's dying. like all lopsided. I think it would be a bad, bad look. I think it'll get to that someday, but. It's one of those, yeah. Dude, the Cabo, did you go out and they had the dudes on the ultralights on the sand? No, what's that? Like, or maybe. They had tr- they were ultralight trikes. It's basically like a hang glider with a dude in a seat and a fucking engine with a propeller. No. Oh, dude, I, I woke up after I fucking did fucking Mexican cocaine <laughs> at like... Sammy Hagar's fucking place. Yeah, yeah. Like I was like, let's go there. I go, this is the worst idea. I was drunk. I fucked this married chick. And then I walk out on the beach to look at the ocean and be like, what the fuck? And there's a guy. And he's I go, how much is it for a ride on this thing? I didn't have shoes on. And he's like, $50. I go, let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> and I was like, and part of me is like, just crash it, dude. Just fucking crash it. So I'm, I don't know where this guy trains as a pilot or anything, but he's on the beach with one of these things, just giving fucking rides. We did a, they did a comedy festival there and Ari was there and a bunch of us were there and I've no, it had to be run by the cartel. I'm, I'm yeah, only probably. saying that because it was in Cabo. They flew us all down, put us in nice resorts. We had free food and free drinks. And then we would do shows at night. When was this? Like recently? 2015, 16. Okay. So it was like two years. And then we would do shows at night. And there would be like 12 people in the audience. It was, had to be and like they a paid bunch, everybody. We got paid. I think we got maybe 500 bucks. Maybe but everything not. else was but comp. Every, actually, I think everything was just free. But once, yeah, because they paid for our flights, hotels, so I don't think they gave us any money. Or maybe okay. not me. Maybe they gave Ari some of the big, because there was big comics there. And then we would do these shows, and there would be like 17 people. And they were like, Tiffany Haddish was there. This is like right before she popped. Mm-hmm. There was like pretty big, well-known comics. Do you think it was like a money laundering scheme? It had to be. And we had the best time, though, because it was just like, <laughs> it's like yeah. it was, I think, 45 comics. And then, and just all the booze. And then, you know, it's weird, because... I was still kind of young in my career. So 45 you know, comics? Yeah. And I think there might have been more than that, actually. Dude, you're then, talking like 45 grand? Yeah. At and minimum. Low. And they, low end. and they couldn't have made any money off it. And then it was weird because you would go. So it was a lot of comics I hadn't met yet. So you'd go, you know, you're at a festival. You go, hey, man, what's up? How are you? Where are yeah. you from? And then, and then you're at a bar. 
and you run out of shit to say to each other, like, want to do a shot? And you want to be like, yeah, man, I just met you. Let's do a shot. And we would just get annihilated. That is, dude, I can't live like that oh, anymore. There yeah, were times where it was like, it wasn't even about the performing. It was like, guess what? We get free drinks. Yeah, yeah. And as long, I could, as, long as I get on stage and I can fucking perform, then I'll be fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, if I go hard, it's like I need at least one day off. But sometimes it's almost a day and a half. I can't do oh, shots dude, anymore. Dude. I just drink shitty beer, drink like Coors Light. But again, we talked about it the other night. When you do this and people are nice to you after shows, it means a lot. When someone comes up and goes, hey, man, you were great. Can I yeah. buy you a shot? Yeah. I'm just not good at saying no. I'm like, oh, it's you t- said I'm I, great. Thanks. I can't, usually it. I can. I'm like. No, oh, uh, I got to get better at that. <laughs> I can't. Also, my fan, like the few fans that do come out, like, because I, you know, because I'm on Ari. So then like yeah. people listen to our show. So I get, we'll get a few fans each show, like, you know, yeah, yeah. three or four. But uh, yeah, they're not the boozer types. Yeah. They're like, you know, we do some weird shit. So like they're into like weird, like some dude uh, yesterday, uh, we do this Beach Cops shows, our Patreon podcast, but mm-hmm. he uh, he 3D printed this image of Shakira with a big cock because <laughs> one of the dudes on the show, he his dream is to fuck Shakira with if she had a big cock put in <laughs> so like we get shit like that and i'm like that's awesome I, i'll take that Dude, any day over a fucking shot are the greatest the best. i was do- this girl's doing like a project for georgetown university or something and she asked me about comedy and she's like how's tickets i go it's all podcast fans and they're the best she goes how do you i go they're the best because they listen to you they feel like they, they know, know you, you. And, and then they, they do they'll do consider it nice stuff i mean sometimes they hang around too long after a show or sometimes like, yeah which i don't mind I, I i don't know how these guys do it like a celeb big famous comedian yeah but for me it means like even when i put together that tour at the time i was talking about on my podcast i like chipotle and these people would bring me like a chipotle card and a gas card and just like the nicest most yeah i mean it's and, a- it's and and who sells tickets it's all podcasts dude but no they- one watches any tv it's YouTube shit. That's the funny thing. I, we were talking about like, I was like, when a, a hit TV, it doesn't even, a show, it doesn't even matter what network. Most of the time, I don't no. even know what fucking network. I go on Amazon and I was like, I heard this is good. I'll just fucking buy it or get it off whatever app I need to. Yeah. It's I crazy. Mean, I always dreamed about like doing like the Tonight Show or Letterman. Or, well, Letterman's gone off. Dude, back, I mean. because Tonight Show now, it means nothing. We're similar ages and that was like, yeah. you're like, fucking Tonight Show. But we have friends that do it. They don't see a spike Dude. in ticket. If you do Ari's podcast, I bet doing this podcast, whatever, I don't know where he's going to put it. Or I didn't even know we were doing a podcast today. Yeah. Would do more for my career than if I did like Colbert tomorrow. 100%. <laughs> That's no where one, people now go out no and promote shit. It. Like no one. I, if, Dude, I know friends I have, they're like, oh, I did. Whatever, when Conan, before he's like, oh, I did one of Conan's last shows. I was like, killed oh, it. when? I told him killed it. I was it, like, what the fuck? I, don't know. <laughs> like, well, I didn't know. I didn't even know you were going to. He's like, oh, yeah, it was at like noon earlier. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, great, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, it is a, uh, it's a fat. But also, they do know, like I added up all the podcast hours that we've done. And I, it was like 36 days of 24 hours a day. If yeah. you listen 24 hours a day, it takes you 36 days to get through it. Yeah. Those people know you better than your fucking family no, does, yeah, right? or at least sh- a side of you. For sure. Yeah. yeah. My mom is always like, oh, I want to listen to you. I go, just, well, I go, yeah. first of all, you know what's going on. Don't do it. She yeah. goes, I just want to support you. And I'm like, support me by not yeah. listening to anything I do. Card. Yeah, no shit. Um, <laughs> hey, I want to ask you about your book because I'm always, I've never... I'm always want to know somebody that's had a bestseller and uh-huh. what the fuck. I mean, what what does it take to be a bestseller? And like, well, what is that's not like that's all numbers bullshit. But the crazy thing was, I I never was supposed to write a book. I'm an idiot. I dropped out of junior college. Like, yeah, I and I just wrote a book. And um, the best thing I ever did. If anybody's listening, and you're, I did it, and uh, I'll never forget. I got the book, like the first copy. And I, I went to Chick Fil A to get some lunch, and I was just sitting there holding. It. I just started crying because I was like, "Was this the be- I, this is the best yeah, moment of yeah, your career?" When you like, because I had it. Because I, like I said, I'm not. I would have never. No one ever thought I'd write a book. And I'll tell you the funny thing about it. So then I'm sitting there crying. I was like, I did it. And then I had a moment. I was like, What if nobody buys my book? And then I was like, Who gives a fuck? You wrote you did a it book. Someone printed it. You can't take that away. And it. And the, the great part is now I go to my friend's house, go to people's house. Maybe they put it out because I'm coming or you just see it places. Yeah. And then but but that's the, the comic in you. You're like, they probably just yeah. put it out because they knew I'd be here. But who the, but fuck the, <laughs> the compliment I always get, which is kind of a backhanded compliment, is like, dude, I, I read it and it's actually like really good. <laughs> and I'm like, dude. and I was like, I get it because I didn't think it would be as I'm really I think it's really good. 
uh, I really am proud of it, but it's so funny because, you know, people will just say, yeah, I just love you and support you. But man, it's, it's like really a good book. There's nothing like, better than the actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because it doesn't have to be there, well, you but it changes the entire tone of what you've just said. That's so funny you said that because the comic was telling me a story last night that someone was doing a show and they were just telling a story or talking about something and an audience member raised their hand and goes, actually, and I was like, oh, fuck that. Actually, don't. <laughs> I don't. Okay. We, we Sometimes these stories aren't based on 100% facts or something. I was like, yeah. some of the comic was talking about insane clown pots or something and the 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 someone super fan is like actually the guy's like and starts telling us like oh god don't Dude, just, fucking come to comedy what, ever what are you ever fucking again. wikipedia just let it go man <laughs> yeah. it's a bit who gives a shit if the facts are a little off your insane clown posse not also he was like this is my time to shine oh. man finally the one area where i have all the expertise i see again that's why podcast fans are the best I mean, I'm not trying to pander to them because we're on a podcast, but they know comedy. Yeah. Like these shows with Ari's fans, they fucking know what to do. What to, If Ari asks yeah. you something, but you don't just say shit. You just like, I, I just hate that so much, man. Just the fucking dumb. I, know. I, I got a- into it with a guy here one time. <laughs> And he was just fucking mouthing off, and and my girl wears the iPhone or the Apple Watch, the Fit bit. <laughs> yeah, and when I get into it with a heckler, because at one point I was like, man, he was wearing a scarf as winter. I was like, I'll fucking choke you out with that scarf around your neck. And my girlfriend's watch went off like she it was she was doing an activity because <laughs> she her, her heart started beating so fast because she she She's was like, oh, so fuck. worried that I was gonna fucking fight this guy right on stage. And I was like, I'll come fucking choke you out with your sweater. <laughs> Or with your scarf, <laughs> but yeah, to some of these audience. So then, what? Ha- how did you get? How does it become a bestseller? Like, it just they just start just, promoing. Yeah, it so and- then I just I did a lot of press for it and just podcasts and then yeah. But it, it's like a, it's like a numbers thing. So it's like te- I don't know what is it like when that like comics like I'm the no like yeah, the like, iTunes yeah, yeah. and it's all not, that. It's, and it's I'm like not a, fucking Stephen King or something. Like if we any of us put out a i uh uh. A CD, it goes to number one. Yeah. It, it'll beat Bo Burnham for like 10 seconds, and then you and get the a guy. picture. And you post <laughs> yeah, you're like, fuck, we timed it so right. So it's not like it's life change. Like, uh, I mean, I sold a lot of books, but it wasn't like... Uh, the thing is, I'm trying to get a, a movie deal for it. So the whole okay, thing that's, stemmed, that's where the money's at. But that's out of my control. Do you get... What is it, like CDs? What percentage of like a book... So if I sale, do you so, get like a a dollar a book yeah, or is it no? So if you buy it off Amazon, I think it's twenty, and I get like four. You get four dollars. Okay. If you you can buy the books, where the money is is selling it as merch. Oh, so, okay. Okay, you get all. So of. you no, so I they'll print a book for f- like four seventy five ship. It cost me about five dollars to get a book. What does it cost them to print a fucking book? Yeah, twenty cents, cents or something. Or yeah. something? <laughs> but Jesus. I get them for like five, and then sell them for twenty. Okay. But the great part about it is not like the old days where if you wrote a book, then you'd have to buy a bunch, put it in your garage. Like if I, so the, if I email Amazon to the people that do it, I can order five books or five thousand books, and they yeah. cost five dollars each. Who said you would always see that? It's also people with like mer- merch. Well, I did it with merch, like and they're like, dude, my garage yeah. is full of fucking shirts from twenty years. The, I, the one guy was like, dude, I'm no longer putting the year on my shirt mm-hmm. because this shit is has a but shelf life. I'll tell you what, the, the bad part is they're fucking heavy. So I used to bring them as merch. They're fucking heavy. Yeah, but how many can you pack so in? So if I pack like 30, so they come in a box of like 30, but that's a fucking checking that through an airport and shit. It's like. Yeah, and then they start weighing yeah. shit. And, they're like, and Dude. when you sell them all, it's worth it, but it's like. How uh, how many books do you have to sell to get like a bestseller? I don't even know. That's they don't like even tell you. Like... Did it. But I don't know if it's like uh, if I was on there for 10 minutes, if I was on there for 10 days, because no one really knows the algorithms of like. It's yeah, like it's podcast fucking, numbers and like yeah. My manager just said that I made one of the new. So then I just said bestseller. Like I don't. I yeah, mean, that's I, all. I, I know matter. it was like bestseller on Amazon, but I don't know if it's for a day or. I what if it comes like that thing where it's like New York Times bestseller? It's almost like remember Zagat Zagat yeah. ratings, and it's yeah. like eventually they're like, well, we could probably just sell these. Not yeah. saying you, but I'm saying like, there's got to be some motherfuckers that go on there and they're like, or they kick Oprah. Yeah, yeah. They're like we'll give well, you fucking. You can just say whatever you want, and like I said, I didn't. They didn't give me like a plaque or anything. My manager just was like sent me a thing like we did it. We're on there. 
but I don't even know where to find it. I mean, yeah, I don't know if it's in the newspaper, so I don't so even weird know. Too. I know. Like, do you have to get a physical yeah, printed yeah. copy? But it's not like, you know, when you go to like a bookstore in the airport and they have like the 20 best sellers mm-hmm. and they have them. Uh, it's I'm, you, I'm, John I'm, Grisham. I'm, not that, I'm, not in, I'm in Barnes and Noble or Amazon or you can. But yeah, you can go the in. The best part of it was Audible. I did the Audible for it. That's yeah. what I recommend. And you, and you and read I did it? it? Oh, that's but cool. But that was the hardest thing. I mean, writing a book's harder, but doing the Audible was so fucking hard. So there's. These two uh, girls helped me with it in Phoenix. And the night before we were hanging out, and they're like, you need to go home and rest up for this. And I was like, for what? To I read wrote a book? It. Yeah. I just read it. <laughs> I thought I was like, Jay-Z, I'll do this shit in one take. I was like, I got it. And then, so then it took me two nine-hour days, and I was fucking Just exhausted. reading all day. But it's just start, stop. Because I would, you know, like Brant Tober, I'd say Tramp Bobler, restart. <laughs> it was just like uh, the frustration of like, you'd get a Jesus sentence, Christ. you'd get a second sentence, fuck it up, go back. To the point, I did two nine-hour days. I finished at like 8.15. I was asleep by 9 o'clock both those nights. Damn. It's just like a weird exhaustion I never felt in my life. Dude, read it. Dude, it's my yeah. nightmare. I'm yeah. a shitty reader. Just over So I would be like, it. fucking, yeah. geez. And then you get to, you're like, I'm almost done. And then you just keep fucking up that last page. Yeah. And it was crazy because I, I went over the book over and over and over. And there's some rough parts in there because my dad went to prison and my dad beat up my mom. My dad was a bad person. And I never... It never hit me till I was reading it. Uh, I was reading it for the Audible, and then I just started crying. And then no these shit. two sweet ladies that helped me produce it came over and hugged, which was funny because I wasn't because I was trying to do it. Did on they a, keep it in there? Like you yeah, getting yeah, emotional, well, I, or you could, I was you like could, you could feel the emotion a little bit. Not when I I would get through a sentence, then I just at one point I just started bawling. But the funny part was I was gonna have these rapper dudes have like a studio. And I was just on a, I had, I didn't have a lot of money. I was trying to produce this all myself. Yeah. And I was going to do it in the studio with these rappers. And they'd have been like, yo, man, shut the fuck up. All our dads oh, suck. Dude. Oh, yeah, I know. Out. He's like, you want to hear my <laughs> fucking these story? These two girls came over and we just cried and cried. We had to take like a oh my God. break. But God. yeah, the audible <laughs> part is like, uh, that was the best. To me, I think it's just the best part of it because you can really probably feel some of like yeah. what I but again my my dad was bad I don't want to have to go over the whole story but my dad was bad a really bad person but my mom protected me from it so I didn't know how bad my dad was till I wrote the book and they so they were mom, together or they split up and no, then my you was, my dad uh he would go to prison my dad was in and out of prison so then okay. they finally my dad beat the shit out of my mom one enough times that one time my mom couldn't take it anymore and like took me and my little brother to a oh, grocery took off. store and then had my 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 grandma came and picked us up and then and then my dad came home and my mom wasn't there and then he spiraled out of control and, oh, and no then went to prison and then but you know my mom just like she, my mom i love my mom but she just if there's a pile of shit she, if there's yeah. like a, a shit toothpick and a pile of gold so, she'll yeah. fucking find it so she's just attracted to shitty dudes and then my that's the problem yeah. with this that cycle man yeah, of my, like my grandma always tried to but then eventually my grandma had to come bail us out and then uh then luckily my mom met another dude i had a good stepdad but yeah and then my dad was just in and out of my life uh at college i joke about it on stage in the book my mom told me he was at college so i didn't know i thought he was really at college <laughs> but he was at prison the whole time so <laughs> it's a good book if, it's you're, right, yeah. if you're listening it's called free roll it's uh, i want to read it free actually I, I i don't read books i, I only i only do audio books so they got to be on audio books because i, I think I you'll fucking, like it, man i promise it's uh i'm obviously biased but it's uh i'll check it out I'll, I'll, you know what i'll text you i'll be like it's actually pretty good yeah. <laughs> that's what <I'll, laughs> yeah so it was a fucking wild ride, man. Damn, okay. Well, we can keep going. What were you guys talking about? Dude, f- I, I don't even remember because I was like, uh, I gotta, you know, I like to have like, uh, Ari's fucking weird. He just, <laughs> he just like w- walk from this up there. I need like, give me five minutes to like gather my thoughts. I know, I'm trying to figure out what he comes off. So wait, you came off at eight. Uh, yeah, you know. Well, he, I did like 12, so I was probably done. At I did 18. What time we started? 745? Uh, we had 9.45. No, 7.30. Or wait, no, 7.30. So I was off at show. like 8, 7.42, and then you came off probably, what were like, you doing? Uh, like a guy over like 8. Okay, so he's probably doing, it's 8.37. Yeah, yeah, so, so he's. So he's probably got 8, what's he doing, 45? 55, yeah, he might, he'll probably get, he always says that, and then he goes fucking hour and yeah. 10 minutes, and he's well, like, I'm only doing 49 <laughs> minutes. Well, and it's like. Going, Shit, I shouldn't be eating gummy bears um, on the podcast. Yeah, no, I don't re- even remember what we're fucking talking about because, you know, you're like, all right, I'm doing this, but I'm also like, all right, I, I, I'm not like, I don't know how you are when you perform, but 
I always get a. I have a little bit of antsiness, you know, where I'm like, all right, I, I need to, I need it I'm to get jammed man. up. Oh, you just like, can walk. Just go. Yeah. Which is like a weird. I don't know why I have that, but I'm just. It's good. Like, people like, do you get? Well, you know what? To be fair, this is my home club. I feel yeah. if I was at a different club, yeah, it does even, take me a different. I will say I'm more antsy like the first or second night. And I don't know. This is like where I, I'm at. So this is, feels like home. Yeah, but even so I, feel, st- I, I still, you know, I, I used to be like, oh, fuck. What's wrong? Then I saw like Dice before he was going up in the OR for like 15 people, you know, and he was like pacing. And I was like, oh, wait, is he always he's like an Eleanor Kerrigan, hilarious comedian, Eleanor Kerrigan. Check yeah, her out. She's great. Um, she's like, oh, yeah, he's like a fucking he's all. And I was like, damn, this fucking guy was doing stadiums and shit. And you're like, well, it's, you know. Well, you know, people always ask me, and I, I tell them, I go, if I go kill or if I bomb, it's like the same. I'm just going to go home. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not, it's not as shit. bad as it's it used to be. I think it's so scary. But here's what I ask you. You probably have answered this a lot of times, but I always ask store guys, and you've been with the store forever, but like, yeah. what's your favorite? Wait, I always ask, first night, your first set once you got passed. Yeah. And then your favorite store night. My passing was weird because I didn't want to be passed. Because I like, I knew I was gonna so, end up in the. Hold on, we have to pause that to all the comics. That, Dude, if anyone's watching this, it was I don't understand one goal it. To get past it, you're like, I didn't even want to get past it. The I most didn't. famous club in the world. Dude, I don't. I. It's always here weird for me to like, even like Ari like very holds it very sacred. And what to me it was like, fuck. Well, I'm getting like two good employee spots, you know. And but when I got past, you know, the store was in shambles. Like there was nobody showing up yep. in late night and that's where I knew I would end up. <laughs> so I, and I was like, I'm going to end up with one spot a week and it's going to be at fucking 1 a.m. And I was like, I don't. So then Mitzi was kind of in and out, you know, of, like I knew Mitzi wasn't with it. Yeah. And so I was like, so eventually there was just like three of us. It was me, Mark Ellis and Jeff Danis, who does Danish and O'Neill with me. And they eventually just go. We'd been working there, and they're like, dude, you have to pass these guys. People yeah. just were like, so then somehow they're just like, hey, Mitzi passed you guys. Oh, shit. And by the way, I'd gone up in front of Mitzi 15 times, and every time was a fucking disaster because Mitzi would ice a room like nobody. Wait, she got, had an energy. Do you have a Mitzi impression or no? Oh, she's like, oh, who is this guy? Oh. I love Mitzi and Tommy impressions. Oh, yeah. And Tommy's like, well, okay. Well, Mitzi was, you know. I mean, Mitsu, and then Tommy would lie to you and I'm like Tommy treats everybody like they're an idiot and I'm like dude we know you're just lying to us <laughs> so then we got passed they claim Mitzi passed us I think it was just like they have to pass like you gotta just this, we're the only three guys that are fucking normal yeah. so like get us on the lineup and then you know we why we fucking wasted away in obscurity at late night doing fucking four people at 1am you know and that's where we cut our teeth Yeah. but I wasn't like even to this day I'm like great it's not like it doesn't i don't know it doesn't i saw people cry when they got passed oh i'm sure i saw people happened. be like and i'm not trying to like be like, oh well it just didn't and i'm also you know i don't know i'm not like the most emotional yeah. guy anyway so i was like great i was like this i know what it means because i work there yeah, yeah so i was like we're gonna waddle away and maybe we'll get pulled out <laughs> of this but probably not and and that was hell yeah, i mean yeah. like those when it was bad and the crowds just were like it was more of a bar than it was a show. Yeah. They're like, well, this is the, probably the only place like that's open right now to get drinks. And that's why they're sticking around like, man, but dude, <laughs> man. Yeah. Some of those nights were some of the worst nights of my life, but some of them were magic. Yeah. yeah. You I know, saying, what about the best or one? Of the, I know that's a hard question. Dude, I'll give you this one. Cause this is just, cause it's going to be a name drop, but on Mondays, you could you could if you're paid regular after the open mic, they do like a lottery, to, yeah. and so to go up in whatever order number you pull. And so I was real late, and so I was up at the Ding Dong Show, the Don Barris yeah, Ding Dong Show, legendary dude, amazing. <laughs> and check out the Ding Dong Show. Don Barris is a fucking I don't Incredible. use he he's the, he's the closest thing to a comedic genius yeah. that I've ever seen. I was just say I don't know how you one of a kind. There's nothing true. You'd never you'll never ne- be another. No, that, before I want to hear the story, but that's what we would go when I lived in L.A. And I didn't. I just got there and I was scared and I would just go watch that. And then, yeah. And when Brody or anything Brody with <laughs> yes. Brody and Don Barris was like coming from Vegas. We didn't really have alt. Com- we just had Vegas comedy. Is just what I don't even know what the fuck you'd call Vegas comedy. We didn't have any like alt comedy. We yeah. just had like combat comedy because we were doing shows, 
in bars with slot machines. So it didn't matter if fucking Chris Rock came in if someone was playing Kino. Yeah. It, I, remember it, the, I, I don't even know. Wasn't there a him. room? There was a room there that like Tripoli was the only yeah. guy. I remember hearing the stories and like tri- everyone's like, dude, Tripoli is the only guy that can tame this room. Uh, like he'll go up and be like, no, we fuck actually, you. We, know, we actually, maybe that's why I don't get worried about it is like we and Tripoli was a guy that we all looked up to because he'd come through and he was yeah. fucking Tripoli. Dude, Tripoli's but, when a bad crowd, Tripoli uh, is just pound, that's pound. I, mean, I still, I think the Vegas crowds are awful, but that, uh, but anyway, so then I moved to LA and I would just go watch that that sh- watch Don or watch Brody and I just fucking <laughs> it's thought fucking it was, the- I'd never seen anything like it it was incredible dude I always said you need another crowd looking through a window watching <laughs> them do this to a crowd that's actually live in there you know yeah, yeah. like it's all the comedy is in the it's what people's reactions they're like what yeah. the fuck I mean I had a lot of the, you remember Robert William Epervaya the yeah. dude with the schizophrenia with yeah. the green like we had a lot of great nights but Probably the the one that uh, that one that bought me like another few years in comedy was uh, and this wasn't even that long ago, but I it was the Monday night when you sign up and I I had a fucking number that was uh-huh. so high that I knew I was gonna get up so I was upstairs with Don fucking around at the Ding Dong show I come down and there's like two people left in the OR and then one guy's like I'm not who was next on the list he's like I'm not going up. And then they're like, well, you're the only one left. I go, well, fuck it. I'm here. I'll just yeah. go up. So I went up and I'm up for like talking to these guys for like four minutes. And then Chappelle shows up and like Eleanor is like, go, like, go up there for some reason. So then I hear some guy yelling from the back and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And it's Chappelle. And so then it just turns in. And by the way, if I had known Chappelle, you know, this, none yeah. of this would have happened. But at this point, I didn't give a fuck. So then it's like 35 minutes of just me and Chappelle and these dudes. And he's just like, he's just like, keep going, man. And I'm just telling stories about like, I grew up in a motel and I also worked on my grandparents' farm. So it's like stories about my dad wrapping chains around like calves legs that are stuck inside, Uh, fucking yanking them out and like crazy, almost dying in a granary and all this. And he's just like, dude, fucking poor white people are way crazier than more <laughs> and so he's like just keep going man he's like i he's like I, keep going man i gotta hear more and so i was like all right and then it was just like he would throw jokes out we'd just go back and forth and then wait he's in the crowd he's in the back you know in the back yeah, yeah. mitzi he's sitting in mitzi's seat yeah, yeah. And there's two guys in there and by this time now like don's in there eleanor and all the employees so there's a few more but we're just going back and forth, just riffing on shit but then and making you jokes. At some point, realized it's him, right? Oh, I knew right at yeah, I knew as soon as he started talking. Yeah, yeah. But at that point, I was like, "Well, fuck it." Normally, yeah. I would have been like, "Oh, fuck it, Chappelle." Um, yeah, that was all. Aw- like, but he's like warming and like the fact, like, yeah, even warming is not the word, but like, he was he was he was in it. He yeah, was like, like he was ju- he was we we're going back. Like he was throwing shit out and we were just joking about shit. And then, uh, and then. Uh, he's like, oh man, he's like, I'm with this chick and she, she's like, we gotta go but I wanna go and then I got off stage and I was out in the parking lot and he pulled up in his truck and he's like, dude, I just wanna tell you, I, fu- I really enjoyed that. That's awesome. And then the next day, Eleanor comes and gets me, she's like, hey, Chappelle wants to talk to you and so Chappelle's like, I'm filming my special up in the belly room and he's like, uh, what are you doing for the next week? And I was like, I'm not nothing. And he's like, we just opened the show up there for me. And I was like, uh, yeah. And so then I went to like, I showed up the first day. And by the way, it's like Chappelle. So like not even comics can get in to watch. Yeah. And it's like all these guys like fucking uh, Bushwick Bill from like the, the ghetto, ghetto boys. Yeah. yeah. You had to turn your phone in, but he had a second phone on him. So he got thrown out up they there. They kicked him out? They kicked him out. That's brave. And, uh, if you know I, any Bushwick Bill stories, that's brave. <laughs> dude, I know. And so then, uh, and so Chappelle's like, yeah, come hang out. And so I went there and his manager was like, who are you? And I was like, well, Chappelle said I could. And he's like, yeah. um, I don't. I was like, did Chappelle do this all the time? So fi- so finally he's like, okay, yeah. And so I did it. And then, yeah, at the end, he's like, dude, it's good having you. And then the first night, Chappelle's like, hang out. So like after um, he got off stage, I went down there, bar, but it was only Chappelle. It was the director dude who was like the guy who produced uh, Def Comedy Jam. And it was Lenny Kravitz. Oh, so shit. Lenny Kravitz and I were just looking at each other, and I was like, dude, this ain't my scene. So, like, after that, I did the shows, and then I would just leave, you know, because it, I was like, it's all yeah. these eight. And I was like, I'm just 
it's not i've never been like a hollywood guy but it was cool and then yeah at the end of it was like uh yeah I, I mean, I have I I got to hang out with them one time just in Ohio, but it's, I'm not even a waste of time with the story because yours is way better. Yeah. But I, I always say this about uh, they always say you don't want to meet your heroes, but in this business, the bigger the comic, the cooler fucking dude. Dude, usually Chappelle, yeah. Chappelle, Rogan, Brian yep. Regan, Attell, anybody yep. that I really like has been, it, and I. I got to meet to tell too, but then we were just talking one time, but he was just talking to me, you know, and when they brought me over to him, he's like, Hey man, I'm Dave. Are you Sarah's guy? Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I am trying not to drool on your shoes. I know who the fuck you're Dude, Dave Chappelle. That's the guy when I used to work the door Chappelle, or uh, tell would come in. I was like, that was the guy I was like, I'm really nervous. Like, yeah. I'm like, Hey Dave. He's like, Oh, Hey, what's going on? And I'm like, and I couldn't talk. Cause I was like, I hold him up on such a fucking pedestal. Well, he came here like two or three years ago. And uh, I would sell my book at shows, and then I was featuring for him, and then he would bring me out on stage, and then he would buy my book every single show, make me take that's his awesome. $20. Dude, that's Then he would sign, and then he'd sign it. Then he'd roast the shit out of me. <laughs> Different jokes every single show. I looked the same every single show, just destroy me the biggest badge of honor. And then he would give my book to someone in the crowd, and then I'd go out to the crowd, and I sold every single book Damn. every single night because of him. Dude, he's the Just best. The fucking the- nicest. One time, another time, we were in Vegas, and the first time I met him, and you know in comedy, this uh, my friend Julie Seba was like, uh, she goes, you know Dave, Brant, Brant, Dave, and he was like, yeah, hey, how are you? And I'm like, you don't know who I am. It's so sweet <laughs> of you. And then we had to go to a club. We were going up to a club. And then he was, it was like right when he went sober. It was like 10 days sober maybe because I was like, I just want to do a Jaeger shot with a tell. This is my dream. Oh. And then we went up to this club. He was playing the House of Blues in Vegas. We went up to their club upstairs and he had a hat on and I had a hat on. And they're like, hey, you guys can't come in the club. And his manager, who they never do this, but I loved it. He was like, he just fucking sold out the club downstairs. And they're like, oh, okay, you guys come in. <laughs> I love that. It's like, yeah. That's what I know. I'm with someone famous. When yeah. they come in somewhere when there's a dress code and they're like, oh, that doesn't apply to you guys. That's, it's not me. It's just yeah. who they're with. You know, I like when with. it's attached to the establishment too where yeah. you're like, dude, this place exists because yeah. of this place down here. Jim Jeffries did it one time too in Vegas. We were, he was playing like the big room at the Mirage and we were all fucked up and we, he's like, let's go to this club and then we walked up there and they're like, is he, is he coming off? What's his, what's his time? Do you know? I think he's, uh, Okay. Okay. Cool. I'll take another. I'll take oh, a beer, yeah. please. Thank you. Uh, and then he went up, and uh, you know, five dudes trying to get in a club. It was <laughs> yeah. like five comedians, yeah. especially in Vegas. And they're like, uh, "You, you guys, what are you doing?" Because you know, Jimmy just walked to the front of the line. He just then, looks like a regular. And dude. they were like, uh, they were just like, "What are you doing?" And then I'm not going to butcher an Australian accent, but he just like, uh, "Hey, look at this poster." And they were like, <laughs> "Oh shit, my, you know, my bad." Here you go, yeah. walk us right in. And I'm, yeah. And I'm like the entourage guy in the back, like, "Yeah, fucking let us in." Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was with Ari once, and like, I've, for some reason, so we wouldn't, they, I forget where, they wouldn't let us something. And then as he's like walking out, some guy's like, holy shit, Ari Shafir. And yeah. they're like, no way. And then the other guy's like, wait, who are you? Yeah. And he's like, ah, I'm just a comedian. Well, one time I got to go to UFC, and Joe left tickets. I was with Doug Benson. And then Joe's like, so nice. After the show, he's like, hey, we're going to dinner if you guys want to go to dinner. But he's like, when I walk out of here, I would just put my head down and I go. So if you can follow me, if you make it to the <laughs> you're restaurant, in. <laughs> you're in. You could eat. And then, but if you don't, man, hey, I hope you had a good time. And I was like, all right. But then that's the thing, too. Whenever I go eat with rich and famous people, they always are going to pay, usually. Yeah. But I still am always like, I always offer. What if they don't fucking. But then, but yes, I can't yes. Afford it. There is like, that thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm Dude. like, oh <laughs> fuck, man! This is like an expensive ass place. And then I'm like, I don't want to order chicken fingers at the fucking steakhouse. But I'm with if this you, bill man. Comes out, what am I gonna do? Dude, I went with like Bert and Ari and some other, and they're like, we want to go here. And I go, I'm just gonna let you know right now, I can, and I can't. And then they play the credit card game where everyone yeah. puts, and I go, dude, I can't play this game. Yeah. Like this is not, <laughs> this is not a game. So I steal one. You know what I do? That's what I would say. If they do the credit card game, everyone puts one in their hat. I just you reach take it. Right. I steal. One. And then I, you know, and then that's what you like should a- do. Then you blackmail them on the way. You say, "Hey, Bert, man, I got your credit card. <laughs> you, fucking- you can have it back for two hundred dollars." Those lucky guys. No. I mean, it's like, dude, uh, yeah, man, I you got it. But they, the thing is, you're like, I hope they know this, and I think they do. But like, 
you also don't want to be the guy who's like, uh, because I was there and they're like, dude, just get what you want. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, fine. But you're still, like, uh, you're still like, like, I'd rather yeah, just go a call and then the bill comes out or something. And I was like, let's just go eat where you fucking dude. One la- the one last thing I went to one of those Rogan Ari called me and I just broke my foot skiing. Uh-huh. I was in L.A. He's in Vegas. He goes, if you can get here, I've got a ticket for you. So I drove to fucking Vegas and I had crutches. So they like bring me down through like <laughs> this elevator and I'm walk out through. And when I had to use the bathroom, I used the bathrooms by the fighters locker room. So I was in there. And I was like, I was like, I'm pissing next to Anthony Pettis. <laughs> and when I come out, Overeem was fighting, and he's wa- he's doing his walkout. And the lady's like, just she's like, oh, just stay like f- ten feet behind. Right. Oh, so there's, gotta- a, there's a video of me, and I'm on crutches walking out with Overeem oh. behind, and I was like, this is fucking that hilarious. Is, awesome. uh, is, is he gonna keep going? He's probably finished. Uh, we should. I'll ra- let's wrap it up so we don't. Yeah, right. he's like, you guys just keep going as long as you want. Okay, but I cool. think this is. Uh, um, all right, all right you, you cool. Wrap it up. Do we say anything? Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Ari, More plugs. Check out Beach Cops on Patreon. Check out the Danish O'Neill podcast. Yeah, go buy my book, Free Roll. Uh, oh, yeah. Available anywhere. I'm going to check yourself. it out. Yeah. And uh, Ryan O'Neill Comedy on Instagram. Brant Tobler on Instagram or anywhere. I forgot these cameras are even on. I know. I I'm always- fucking putting <laughs> gummy bears in my beers and shit. All right. Uh, we all right. Did it. I'll shut these off. He taught me how. All right. Perfect. Cool. I'll go close good this Good talking show. to you, man, and good meeting yeah, you this awesome. weekend. That was, uh, was, that was the episode. <sighs> Since the introduction, I did some research. I found out I was a bit wrong on what's causing the Ukrainian situation. Uh, I'd like to apologize. I'm sorry to the uh, people who were most affected by this. I've seen protests in the streets of New York. Uh, the yellow and blue flag. Um... Only two colors because that's Ukraine is a poor country and that's all they can afford. And I've become aware of the suffering that's happening with the Ukrainian uh, people. Um, and it was not, it was wrong of me to say it was because of the men's aerial freestyle um, skiing competition in Beijing, China at the Olympics. It was, uh, I was taking lightly what is a very serious situation just because I. Hadn't read the news doesn't mean I was had the right to make light of it. And um, anyway, I've talked to some protesters, and what was going on was it's uh, borscht. Um, the Russians believe they invented borscht, and the Ukrainians were saying that they invented borscht. Um, most Americans are saying, "Why would you, what? Who even cares? One of the blandest soups in the world. You literally put sour cream. It's cold. It's not." tasting in any way but it, these are the things that matters um to Voldemort and um above all I would like to say that uh Russia if you continue uh, after Ukraine taking over country 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 uh, um, taking down and hacking our defense system sending ground troops in here to a to a country that's been befuddled by 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 hackers People turn at each other all the time. It would be the best time to invade. And if you do, and if you need a, someone to assist you on the ground, I, I can do that. Um, Russia, I have access to many comedians. I know who they are. I can get the word out, uh, saying not to badmouth Voldemort. Um, I can be a valued asset to you is what I'm saying. Russia, I believe in your dominance. I believe you will be victorious in the end. And I'm Ari Shafir. This is Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank Podcast. I believe it can be an outlet for you to get the word out on certain things. It would help my ratings if I had direct uh, contact to the Kremlin and was able to get words out for them. Uh, propaganda, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, what's it called? When you herd, herding in prisoners, I, I can help that. I went to report. I assume the trains will start running again, um, whether for Jews or just uh, dissidents in general. Uh, but willing to help in any way I can is my point so I think you know I'm serious um, Russia I hope you get the USSR back and don't do the silly Russia thing we all know you're stronger than that um, and for Brent Tobler uh, and Ryan O'Neill I'm saying don't forget to check out my Patreon with Ryan O'Neill's on there uh, patreon.com slash Ari Shafir don't forget to subscribe and for both those guys 
Let's say this has been Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank podcast, episode 460. Uh, the Denver Chronicles. Dos Vidanya. And um, however you say bye in Russian, I, I will learn that in many, many more words with, uh, with Duolingo or, or just through general torture uh, techniques of learning languages through the, use, the onset torture uh, I found to be the best for learning in quick situations. Um, again, I'm Ari Shafir. And um, now you know.